Good morning, everyone. So my name is Scott Lee, and I'm a principal engineering uh, uh, lead at Microsoft. So I work in the core OS group, and I and my team owns all of the Windows storage drivers uh, for storage uh, devices, including NVMe. So this morning, um, I'm going to share about the, the, you know, some of the NVMe related things that we're working on within Windows. So in today's talk, I will share about some of the updates around the, the NVMe support that's, that's in Microsoft's NVMe driver and the latest versions of both Windows client and Windows server. Uh, I will also share about the, the efforts that we have underway uh, around modernizing the NVMe technology support within Windows. And then I will end by sharing about a couple of features that, uh, that we're going to be working on in the future that will have impact to, to the NVMe devices. So, so this is an opportunity for us to share ahead of time so that if you are working on NVMe controllers, you can be prepared for things that you will see you know, with your devices when, when it's working with Windows. So, so the latest versions of Windows Client and Windows Server are Windows 11 24H2 and Windows, and Windows Server 2025. So in these versions of Windows, um, we, we have made some changes and, and, the, and the memory that the Microsoft NVMe driver allocates for host memory buffer. So previously, in, in, in our pre previous versions of the driver, we limited the amount of HMB memory that the device can have to 64 megabytes. But in these newer versions of, of the Windows OS, we are changing that. So, so like, like before, uh, the Windows driver will respect and, and use the device's preferred size when determining how much HMB to allocate. But, but that, that size has to be within the limit. So previously, we had a hard cap around 64 megabyte, but we are changing it to be a minimum of either one gigabyte or 1 64th of, of the system RAM size. Another enhancement that we made is around our support for pass-through commands. So, so there is a web page that's available uh, that, 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 that has more information about these pass-through command support. So within the, the pass-through command support, we have introduced a new variant of the, the pass-through command that allows a caller to specify all the CDWs for a command. We've added support for UUID, and then within the WinPE environment of Windows, we remove all restrictions around the commands that, that you could use the pastor interface with. So I know that we have heard in the past from various device vendors around your desire of just issuing any arbitrary commands and to be able to test your devices with. So, so we made this change to make it easier that, that within WinPE, you could use Windows to test your devices with. Uh, another change we made in these versions of the Windows OS is around when the driver will send a timestamp update. So we've heard from device vendors around it would be very beneficial if uh, for your NVMe devices, if, if Windows exits the lowest non-operational power state, that it would be better if we could send you a timestamp update so that your time accounting could be more accurate. So we made that change in these versions of the Windows OS. So, so if you are interested in knowing about what NVMe features or commands that are used within Microsoft's NVMe driver, we do have a web page available that documents that information. Uh, the next topic I'm gonna cover is around efforts that we have underway around modernizing the NVMe uh, support within Windows. So, so we have two efforts that are underway. Uh, the, the first effort, we, we term it native NVMe technology. So this is a redesign of the Windows lower storage stack that we're undertaking. Uh, we're also working on adding support for NVMe over fabrics into Windows. 
So, so with both of these efforts, uh, the, we do have previews that are available in Windows 11 24 H2 and Windows Server 2025 or Windows Insider OS builds that for folks who are interested in trying, you, you can try it out. So native NVMe technology. So this is a redesign of the Windows lower store stack. That, that's optimized for high performance multi queue storage harbor, and it will use NVMe technology concepts and features. So internally, we are referring to this effort of, as store MQ or storage multi queue. So within the, 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 the store MQ effort, we are extending the Windows store port model to support both existing many port and then in the future, new store MQ many ports. So, so the Microsoft NVMe driver, we do have a preview version of this, as I mentioned earlier, that, that is using the store MQ that we're working on. So this new architecture will provide significant improvements in CPU usage, performance, and multi-device performance of scalability compared with the existing uh, Windows Store Stack that we have today. So, so right now, within uh, the, the, the Windows, uh, the, the latest Windows OS, uh, if you have an NDA with Microsoft, uh, you, you can have the, you can play around with it. And, and there is an email if you have questions about this. So on this slide here, uh, I have a very high level diagram of what the Windows Store Stack looks like. And on the slide, the, the, the pieces that are in blue are what we are working on as part of our Store MQ effort. So as part of this effort, uh, you'll see that we are introducing a new um, disk layer stack within Windows that, that is, that will be used for Store MQ. And then within the store port model, you'll see that we, we have a piece in there that store MQ, that within the store MQ piece itself, uh, there is an NVMe core. So we are building uh, explicit knowledge and support for NVMe within store port. So, so using store MQ, we are able to support a variety of different storage hardware. So we can support a PCIe NVMe device, we can support a NVMe over fabric of um, the uh, initiators and targets. And then we can also support non-NVMe hardware. Uh, next, I'm gonna share about our, our thinking around the NVMe over fabrics. So, so we are currently working on adding support for NVMe over fabrics and Windows. So this will cover um, enhancements within store port to have fabric awareness. It will include transport of uh, initiator uh, mini ports. Uh, in the future, we are also looking at, at supporting a Windows-based software target uh, with, with multi-pathing support and also management support. So our initial focus is around initiators. So, so in the future, um, you should expect that within Windows, Microsoft will ship an initiator mini port that supports the TCP transport and RDMA transport. For fiber channels, we're not, we're not gonna be working on the Microsoft own uh, fiber channel initiator, but we will work with our industry partners to, to provide the fiber channel support uh, for fabrics. Uh, in terms of our target, we are targeting a minimum of NVMe 2.0 for our fabric su support. So, so the, our, our, our fabric initiator, um, this is available today in preview uh, within Windows Server 2025 for folks to try, try it out and, and, and see how well it works. So again, we have an email set up for folks who have questions about this. And then my last topic for today is about futures. So, so there are a couple of few, uh, few features that we will be working on that will have ecosystem impact. Uh, the first one is dynamic, dynamic link rate management. 
So if we look at PCIe generations, we know that each generation of PCIe, it's not only faster, but it's also consuming more power. So, so, so this isn't scalable, especially you know, if you look at Windows client, where, where we have a lot of mobile devices where battery power is very important. So, so going forward, Windows will adjust the PCI link speed of NVMe devices to improve the power efficiency of the system. So you may see that the, the NVMe device operate in different PCIe link speed depending upon the state of the system, such as you know, whatever uh, system perform power performance mode that the user chooses, or, or certain states that, that we have within the operating system. And then from a driver perspective, we will dynamically monitor the link speed usage and adjust the link speed to match the usage. So, so from a driver perspective, if we see on the system itself that, that in terms of the amount of data that's being transferred, if, it's on, if we only need, say, Gen 2 speed, we will set the, the link speed to Gen 2. So I know that I have done some amount of engagement with, with, with certain of our partners in industry, and I know that today it doesn't seem like the, the, the ability to do a lot of PCI link speed changes against controllers is something that's very robust, and folks are telling me that they support. But uh, this is more of a call to action that as you are designing new controllers, Please make sure that you're designing controllers where we can change the link speed a lot so that, that the, be, the devices can be more power efficient. And from a Microsoft perspective, we will continue to work with our industry partners on trying to identify what are the other potentials for us to improve the power efficiency of NVMe devices. The, the next future feature uh, that I want to share that will have impact, uh, that may have impact to, to the devices is around data set management hints, or DSM hints. So, so going forward, uh, when you should expect that Windows will be able to provide some DSM hints and the reads and write commands that we send to the devices. Um, we, we believe that by, by sending these hints, that we could help improve the, the, the I.O. responsiveness from devices and also potentially improve the device lifetime. So, so I want to do an early sharing with our industry partners to give you awareness of this. And once we flush out more of the details, well, we will share it. And that is it in terms of my sharing about what we're doing today in Windows. Any questions? Uh, I have a question. Do you have any plans to backport these features back to, let's say, Windows Server 2022? Uh, our enterprise customers are not liking to sit on the bleeding edge of the software. When, when you say backport these features, what, what features are you talking uh, about? The store MQ and the re re rewrite of the store NVMe, uh, the mini portal. Uh, as of right now, we don't have plans on backporting this to, to Windows Server uh, 2022. Does uh, your driver team have plans for FTP and ZNS? What is it? Does your driver team have plans for FTP and ZNS? Uh, we don't have plans on supporting FTP. Um, but with, with ZNS, uh, we don't have plans of supporting ZNS outside of Microsoft. Uh, do, you have you, do you have any sensing on uh, the commonality of supporting DSM hints. Uh, you, you made comments on the support of the link change testing, but what about DSM hints? Is that a uh, common in the vendor ecosystem? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. I, I know that up to this point, it was my understanding that there is no OS that provides these hints today. Uh, that's why uh, I'm making the sharing right now to, to let folks know about within Windows itself, we are planning, and we, we expect that we should be able to provide these hints. And, and I want to share this ahead of time so that folks can start thinking about how do you leverage 
the, the existing hints that are defined in the NVMe spec. Are you planning on using those hints within the OS or simply passing them if they were given by the end application? So the expectation is, as of right now, we're not expecting to expose new APIs to applications, that we will leverage the existing mechanisms available in Windows to generate these hints that we could pass to the devices. Yeah, I have a question. Um, so do you have a plan to support the, uh, something like a GDS, like a NVIDIA GDS uh, for like AIPC, those kind of thing? Um, I'm not familiar with that. So I think I need a bit more details from you before I could provide okay. an answer. Okay, so uh, basically you can, you can uh, transfer the, uh, the data from the uh, GPU to the uh, SSD directly? Um, so we, we do have the ability uh, to do that using the Microsoft NVMe driver, but that does require, it, it only works in certain cases. Because obviously you do have to have the destination memory being used for the, the, the IO transfers for an NVMe device to be in the common share of address space. So without that, I don't see how that would work. Okay, so th also that means you, don't, you do not have a plan to support the uh, CMB, right? For the um, no, we don't support CMB today with the Mendes. Hi, so uh, how do you think of uh, the SSD uh, with the compression capability, uh, which means like the capacity is increased, but like the, uh, it's not predictable the, for the real uh, capacity? Uh, can, wait, can, can you repeat that again? So uh, SSD with the compression capability. Okay. So the capacity like if it's 2D, 2 TB uh, SSD, but with compression maybe like for database can, it can achieve like around five terabyte. Yes. Uh, but it's not predictable. Sometimes it may, maybe it's like four terabyte or six terabyte. Right, so I, I think today if you look at SSD capacity, unless you support thin provisioning, that the host is expecting the device is providing some amount of fixed capacity. Yeah. So, so if you're doing compression internally within the device, uh, yes, that will definitely result in less media usage within the device, but, but I mean, are you exposing a fixed capacity to the host, or is it more of a sort of a, a, a thin provisioning type of behavior? It's kind of thin provisioning, uh, but it's not pre predictable uh, as for the real capacity. Okay. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe we should talk in, in details more, because I think okay. our time is up for the session. But, but we could chat offline. Okay, sure, thank you. Thank you very much. Everyone.